are you going, Master? For a drink. Sorry about the mess. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dennis Lawson, for taking some time out here on Rebel Force Radio. It really is a pleasure to be with well, you. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for asking me. It truly yeah. is. So, um, how did this all start for you? How did you get the Star <laughs> did Wars I get job? the Star Wars gig? Yes. <laughs> well, it's very random, honestly. I, uh, a whole lot of, because I was a young actor starting out, kind of. I was very busy doing lots of theater, films, and that kind of stuff. And um, I went to meet George with loads of other people. And I seem to recall being told he gave you marks out of 10 when he met you. <laughs> and uh, I think I got about three out of 10, something like that. So I didn't get the job. Okay. okay? Mm. So anyway, um, 76 when they made it, um, I was very, very busy. I, apart from other things, I did a couple of movies in France that year. And I came back from the second movie and suddenly get this call. Oh, uh, George wants you after all. I went, oh, oh, really? Okay, so, <laughs> so well, well, fine, okay. And um, so I think, uh, I seem to recall he'd cast someone who didn't quite work out or something like that. So um, I honestly wasn't thinking too much about it. You know, I said, well, okay. And it started like in a few days, something like that. You could be up to L Street in four days. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> and um, we had no concept or knowledge of, really what it might be apart from it was a sci-fi movie and that was kind of that was kind of how it started really yeah right do you recall the character you auditioned for was it always going to be a rebel i know pilot, i or? don't know listen the thing was that we just went in and talked it wasn't like a normal audition like you went in and read stuff we just went in and talked to george mm -hmm. and he um i don't even remember these days they'd put you on camera that kind of thing i don't think he did that we're in a little office in the middle of soho in london somewhere and we just had a chat you know mm -hmm. and i think he was looking for types facial types age that kind of thing so it was fairly and as i say it felt fairly random really you know yeah, yeah. at what point did you become aware that there were other films oh not until um you know we were just involved it's quite it was amazing really because we were just involved in this science fiction adventure film uh which had quite a modest budget at mm -hmm. that time i think it was seven million you might know better than i do it was something <laughs> like that and um we shot it on it off and on for a few weeks and stuff and it was great fun with lots of other young actors hanging out waiting to go up into the chair and shoot the mm -hmm. X-Wing stuff, you know, all that. And um, so it wasn't really, uh, I can't really remember. I remember going to see it when we saw it the first time. It was incredible because it was so far ahead of its time, technically. Mm -hmm. I mean, he broke so much ground. I yeah, mean, I'd absolutely. never heard the term um, computerized camera before. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> a computerized camera, oh my God, what's that? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And uh, no... Ca uh, cameras are computers yes. that's all they are mostly yeah. so um it was a totally unknown quantity so it wasn't until i think that first one came out mm -hmm. that they came back to us and and i, I yes now hang on because you bring it back to me now mm -hmm. seem to recall we knew or i remember mark hamill telling me there were there were three films george had written three films in fact I, now i might have this wrong there were three trilogies Yes. Right. That was so a, he had yeah, mapped out plan. three trilogies and be going, what? My God. <laughs> so it wasn't, but it wasn't something we took seriously or thought too much about. You know, mm. once I finished Star Wars, I was off doing loads. I was doing a lot of theater at that time and musical theater and stuff. So um, when the other one came back around, it was just nice. You know, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Came out the blue in a way. And so for the original film, you primarily shot all of your scenes in the cockpit in front of the blue screen. Well, yeah, most of them, but um, and um, uh, but there was plenty of stuff in the sound stages, that, you know, in the full sets and stuff mm -hmm. like that, briefing room scenes and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know. Um, although my memories tend to blur one movie into another. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but, uh, I'll bet. but yeah. um. There were plenty of stuff. I mean, I remember we doing a big briefing scene with Carrie Fisher and... Um, uh, that would have been in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, probably was. Yes. That's yeah. right. That's right. Do you remember the time you first sat down in an X-Wing cockpit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because um, it, it was very funny, really. We, it was shot in Elstree in London, North London. And um, 
Uh, it was kind of um, very, it was great fun. Mm -hmm. There was about, tw I don't know how many actors there were, and we'd all be in, sitting around in chairs outside in our flight suits and all that, <laughs> just having a laugh, you know, messing about. And we'd all be waiting to go up to the chair. It was a bit like going to the dentist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're in the waiting room. Yeah, exactly. Or like going to see Santa Claus. That's right. I have it like that. And the chair, well, uh, technically, um, the, 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 the chair was up about 12 feet in the air, I think, something like that. Maybe not that much, but you climbed up a ladder and underneath, it was like a, pla uh, a raft, a platform. There'd be half a dozen technicians under it, just giving it a little bit of movement. Right. That's how basic it was. And you're obviously against the blue screen behind you, mm -hmm. but there was nothing in front of you. Right. The, co the cockpit was sliced there and you were looking at the camera and George, and that mm -hmm. was it. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know um, so you, the battle, the main battle sequence in that movie, that first movie was, I don't know, 25, 30 pages long. It was very complex. Yes. There was loads of stage directions and then you'd have a line, you know, wedge, mm. la, 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 la. <laughs> uh, look at the size of that thing or whatever, that kind of stuff, you know. And, um, and so I, I got up there and sat in and George thought that you could just do 30 pages of dialogue on your own with no cues out of sequence. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I said, very quickly said to George, that doesn't work, George, that will not work. We can't work that way. Uh, so what we did was we came to an arrangement. George said a line and I repeated it. Mm -hmm. And then he would say, okay, now look up to the right and say that line. Now look down there and say that line. Now say faster, look forward. And we do about six versions of the same line. Now, I was fine with that. I thought it was a nice way. It kept it very fresh and spontaneous, you know. Right, yeah. Then he had lots of options in his edit, you know. So that's kind of how we did that. There's know? some great outtakes, actually, oh, on really? some of oh. the, the video releases oh, where you can hear there? the line being Oh, repeated. really? Can you? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, let's see that. Yeah. That's very yeah. funny. You yeah. know, Harrison Ford famously talked about when he got in the cockpit of the Falcon, he wasn't sure, you know, as a pilot, well, what, yeah, what, what, do do I, you, what do I do? Were you yeah. given any direction about how to make it look oh, like you God, were flying no, this no, thing? No, no, no. You just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, made it, it was about make along. pretend. You know, it was playing, Yeah, it was right? playing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I Did you have a anything. steering wheel or anything? I, do you know, I can't remember. There must have been something there, wasn't there? I can't yeah. remember the image of the a shot. A yoke or something. Yeah. There must have been a... Um, there must have been something had to have that been. you pressed and so I can't remember now. I seem to recall hearing a lot of the actors who played pilots yeah. remarking about the heat on the sound. Well, stage. that's right. You know, we shot in summer the summer of nineteen seventy six in the UK was incredibly hot. Uh, England was brown, mm -hmm. literally. It looked like bits of Italy. Wow. I mean very it was rare. Just brown. Yeah. The yeah. fields mm -hmm. were all brown and it was a drought and um, seventy five was quite hot as well, but seventy six was incredibly hot. It was the beginning, I always remember, it's the first time people wore shorts outside <laughs> in the city. Because we didn't do that then. Right, right, right. You know, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. they'd, they'd cut their jeans off and you would go, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, now it's nothing, is it? But then that was the first time people went around the city in shorts. Wow. That's, how, you know. So it was very, very hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. I, I just always picture those X-wing pilots. Yeah. And I imagine them just wearing like Bermuda shorts because oh, it was so hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was hot. And with the helmets on and all that stuff. Sure. So Absolutely. What, are you, what are your thoughts after seeing all of this? Yeah. In the fans and yeah. how much uh, dedication yes. and love there really is for the yeah. character that you play? It's been, it's been you know, uh, as you know, it's the first convention I've done and I, you know, I, I apologize to them this morning for being 40 years late, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Uh, it's really knocked me out. I didn't expect this. Um, they're so generous and uh, uh, a lot of the time it's very touching, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know, I finally managed to finish this guy's poster the other day and he just mm -hmm. burst into tears, wow. you know. <laughs> and it was a couple I think I know what guy you might be talking about. All right, okay, about. okay. I, I may. He's been chasing getting that original poster signed yeah, and for I, years. I, and then a couple came in yesterday whose house had burned down. Mm -hmm. They'd lost everything, they said, but they managed to salvage their posters. Wow. And they brought them in, you know. Wow. And there was a woman who's, whose husband had died three weeks ago. Mm. And um, I've sadly been through that experience myself um, mm -hmm. 12 years ago with my wife. But and I, So um, she, they were going to come together. Huh. and get this stuff signed and so she, she it was important to her to come yeah you know? and apart from that um 
It's just the generosity of, of, of people. It's just it's wonderful. It's yeah. brilliant. And what's nice for me too is there's a lot of people come up, you know, because I've done so much work and uh, with, with, with other things from other work I've done, and that's been lovely too, you know. Then you worked with uh, the gentleman who played the Rancor Keeper in Return of the Jedi. His name what was his name? Name? Paul Brook. From the, the, the was this the oh, Kit Curran radio oh my God. show? Yes. Yeah, Paul's brilliant. I did the Kit yeah. Curran radio, which is a comedy series about right. a disc jockey, mm -hmm. and it was roughly based on the character of Phil Silvers in Sergeant Bilko. Mm -hmm. That's and so it was this renegade sort of uh, ch what we call a chancer in the UK, uh, a hustler, mm -hmm. DJ guy uh, in London, and so and this radio station, independent radio station, and yeah, Paul was in it and very very funny. He, yeah, he's a great great actor, a great character, you know. Wonderful. Star Wars alum like yourself? Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And speaking of Star Wars alums, your nephew, my, my nephew. Here. Never heard of him? No, I, <laughs> we yes, him exactly. He's a bit player in the Star Wars film. He doesn't yeah. do much, <laughs> but I, uh, I haven't seen it. I mean, I no, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's fantastic. And we have a, we have a wonderful relationship. Always have had since he was very small. So, um, yeah. and, uh, Do you remember what advice that you you gave? Did well, you when give he, him advice about well, Star he Wars? he likes to say, okay, he likes to say <laughs> that I told him not to do it. Oh, so my uncle said, don't do this, but I, <laughs> I never did that. Uh, but I remember when it came up because he uh, he was pretty young, you know, and mm -hmm. I said, now you be careful of this because it's easy when you're that age and something this big to become so associated with a role, it's hard to move on from it. The perception with the public, but not just the public, the other people in the business, mm -hmm. uh, within the business community, uh, you know, um, the, uh, uh, so I, I said, just be careful of it. I think about it, but um, luckily he totally ignored my advice, which is good. And yes. um, but he, and he had done plenty of work before mm -hmm. of very high caliber, and was immediately off doing other stuff. So it worked out incredibly well for him. And he yeah. did a I wonderful think he's job. A great it. actor. He's he, a wonderful actor. He caught my attention in 1994 in an episode of ER. Remember oh, that TV right. show? And he was great, you know, because he, so uh, he there was no need for him in a sense to do that. He mm -hmm. had a great movie career. And um, he just loved the show. So now I'm going, I want to do this. It was I one of my it. favorite episodes of ER. Yeah, yeah. And oddly enough, watching him in that role, yeah. I was thinking to myself, boy, wouldn't he work well in the Star Wars universe? And this was before oh, the announcement really? was uh, even uh, made. Interesting. I don't interesting. even think they announced that the prequels were in production yeah, yet at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just something about him. There was yeah. a quality about him. Yeah. And oh, yeah, uh, yeah. obviously he's been able to rise above typecasting oh, or completely. anything like that. He's, he's been very, very clever in the way he's jumped around from, you know, in the moment he's shooting in Calgary, uh, Fargo, I mean, and he's mm -hmm. playing twins in that, you know, so he's put on a lot of weight and shaved his head and all that it's stuff. He's so versatile, you know, he's, yes, he's a, a yeah. wonderful uh, singer. Yes, right. And, he's a great singer, uh, a musician. And Moulin Rouge. Rouge. Beauty and the Beast, Moulin Rouge. Mm -hmm. And I love that film he did with Renee Zellweger, Down with Love. Which oh, was yeah, sort gorgeous. Of a, a, a 60s, yeah, beautiful A gorgeous film. movie. Yeah. yeah, he was terrific in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I have a little selfish question because I know you're oh, a theater guy. And okay, I work yeah. Uh, yeah. in uh, touring Broadway here in the United States. Okay, yeah. Uh, you have a favorite musical theater uh, show that you did? That I've been in. Yeah, that you've been in? Well, uh, well, I um, uh, probably the thing that was... Look, I... I became an actor because of people like uh, uh, Jerry Lewis, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Danny Kaye, Astaire, Gene Kelly, those guys. Um, the all-around entertainers. And what I was responding to, I don't know now, was American Vaudeville. That's mm. what I was responding to. That's why I became an actor. Yeah. And so um, I, um, and Lucille Ball mm. was a big influence on wow. me, Buster yeah. Keaton. Was it right. all Those comedians people. your name? That's right, absolutely. And I always that was that was it for me, you know. And um, uh, so I um, no, what, uh, what was I was going to say. So yeah, probably the biggest success I had on the stage was a show called Mr. Cinders, which came from 1930, hmm. and it was a vehicle for a young comic uh, actor. And so uh, there was a lot of physical routines. I've done a lot of mime and movement and dance in my career, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Um, 
But uh, but interesting enough, when I when I was still shooting Star Wars, one of the third movie maybe I was doing a musical called Pal Joey. Oh, love it! Which is a right. phenomenon. I was playing the lead in that. It was my first lead in the West End. It's a right. massive part and a lot of tap and jazz dancing and stuff. And, and um, the role made famous by Frank Sinatra in the film, of that's course. That's right. Yeah. And but uh, what was more pertinent was uh, Gene Kelly played it in 1941 on Broadway, that's and it right. took yeah. him to Hollywood. This is what established him in the movies. Yeah. So I was doing this musical. And Mark was very, Mark Ham was very, very friendly with uh, Richard Hunt, I think, who's one of the Muppeteers on hmm. Star Wars. And we, were, we had a lot of dinners together. And um, uh, Gene Kelly was in London doing the Muppet show. Oh, wow. And Richard said to me over dinner one night, come up and meet Gene. I said, oh, I can't, you know. So anyway, and you're doing the show. And I'm doing time. the show. Oh, my gosh. So I went up to ATV outside the studios, outside London, North London. And um, we got there, we were watching The Muppet Show, and the, the word came back, Mr. Kelly doesn't want to be disturbed. Yeah. And Richard, being Richard, which is quite uh, eccentric, said, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, follow me. <laughs> so he walked straight into Gene Kelly's dressing room and said, Gene, I got a young guy here, you got a lot in common, I thought you should say hello. And he was so lovely to me. He oh, said, yeah, we, oh, you do, we heard about you in Paris. We've just come, and um, we had wow. a great chat. And one of his great bits of advice to me was, suck lemons during your fast changes. <laughs> suck lemons during yes. your fast? Why would he suggest because that? Because Joey was a, a dancer's role. It was massive. And when you weren't on, you were changing. Yeah. So what he would do is get into the wing, stick a lemon in his mouth, and do a quick change and get back out. Wow, you know, just like it was you. really intense. Wow. I don't know how I did it. I, you know, um, I had a... A fridge full of Guinness at that time. There you and go. A, that's that's something better to put your mouth in. And a bowl of Mars bars in my dressing room because yeah. I lost so much weight. It was wow. wow oh yeah, you're God. on stage in that role almost you know, the entire you time. You hardly come off. Yeah, it's a and killer. You know. Do you keep up with uh, what you know? What's hot uh, in the West End now? And yeah, uh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Anything come to mind that you've seen or you're excited to see? Oh, sure. There's a lot of really great stuff on at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a fabulous production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf on at the moment in London, mm -hmm. which is an incredible reviews. Um, uh, there's, oh, there's just, it's very, very strong at the moment. There's a lot of great stuff going on. I'm trying to remember what else, um, that well, I want to get to. It's, uh, we have Hamilton coming your oh way. Oh my God. Yeah. I want to see that. If yeah. I can get, well, I'll get in. I You'll get, get in. I, you, I you know ways. people. <laughs> I, have, I know people. I, I saw it in Chicago. It's fantastic. It's worth, uh, it, it's, it lives up to the hype. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that yeah. a lot. Yeah, you definitely. mentioned you like to drink Guinness. Well, no, I only drank Guinness at that time. Oh, mm. because I was wondering if you saw the Alec Guinness Guinness <laughs> pint glasses. What a lake. What a lake. Yeah. This guy's good. <laughs> huh? The Alec Guinness Guinness pint glasses. No. Yeah, it's a, a pint glass for Guinness. It's yeah. got the Guinness logo on yeah. it. Yeah. But... It has Sir Alec Guinness's oh, that's face brilliant. That's on brilliant. it. Brilliant. I think I think our friend Kevin Lyle can find one. Oh, of those really? For you. That's yes, very, very for funny. Sure. Yeah. That's very funny. Well, I can't thank you enough. Uh, oh, I'm for really sitting pleased down to be here. Yeah, this so. is yeah. great. It was it's great. It's been a great experience. You. I'm so glad to be here. Really, well, on behalf fabulous. of Star Wars fans everywhere, thank you so much for well, taking time out and being with us on the 40th anniversary. you. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Luck has files and attack positions. Hi, this is Dennis Lawson, and you're listening to Rebel Force Radio. Your source for the Force. The size of that thing. That's a gun, all right, too.